first of all, uh, President Schneider, uh, President Todd, uh, Dr. Wong, guests, students, um, thanks for coming to Colby. I think this is going to be a uh, very worthwhile afternoon. Um, anybody have a cell phone? Please turn it off. Or at least get the uh, ringer volume off so it doesn't interrupt the proceedings. Way back in 1951, that's even before I was born, uh, New York Giants center fielder Willie Mays was the National League's Rookie of the Year. The following season, he wore a different uniform. Like many others of his generation from all walks of life, he'd been inducted into the U.S. Army. Among those soldiering the same year as uh, Willie Mays uh, was another uh, American of some repute, uh, PFC Edward M. Kennedy of Massachusetts. Later on, with several gold records already behind him, Elvis Presley also took his turn to serve. It was a time when virtually all men who could serve in the armed forces of the United States did. Those who didn't were more pitied than envied. <clears throat> Draftees were out in two years. Recruits, folks that signed up voluntarily, stayed at least four years but got a better deal. They got a choice of duty and training. Most veterans were proud of their service. A great many of them regarded it as an important and formulative part of their growing up. Things changed, however, in 1973 with the coming of the all-volunteer military that ended the U.S. draft. It also brought to close what had been a major rite of passage that celebrities and the sons of the rich and the famous shared with the rest of us. After 1973, men reaching the age of 18 were no longer pushed towards the military service by the draft or by cultural norms. The volunteer force set up a major shift in the demographics of America. Three quarters, 80% if you count age 85, of Americans, American men over the age of 80 are veterans. By contrast, less than one-tenth of those under the age of 30 are veterans. Veterans are, are a diminishing minority. For the most part, what young people know about military service, they've heard from their fathers, their grandfathers, seen in the movies, or picked up secondhand. Currently, only about 13% of Americans or veterans. The military still ranks high in public opinion, but this could change. Lack of wartime success could bring back contempt for military values, much like it did during Vietnam. News coverage of the military usually focuses on scandals, losses, um, waste, mistakes. Most of the entertainment industry traditionally depicts the military as buffoonish, bumbling, corrupt, or ill-informed. When people do have personal uh, experience on which to base their judgment, images delivered by the news and the entertainment industry dominate. Or maybe, as we might say this year, lack of images produced by the military and the entertainment industry, industry might dominate. It does not follow that all that could understand the military have to have served in the military, but those who have served in the military can lend their voice. Today on this panel, we have several of those voices, all men who have served in the military. I'm going to introduce them from uh, center out. Dr. James Wright. Dr. Wright is the son of a World War II veteran. He joined the Marines at age 17 and served for three years, primarily with the 1st Mar Marine Brigade in Hawaii and Japan. He earned a PhD from the University of Wisconsin-Madison became a history professor at Dartmouth College in 1969 and served as Dartmouth's president from 1998 to 2009. Since 2005, Dr. Wright began a series of visits to U.S. military medical facilities in Washington, D.C., where he met Marines and other U.S. military personnel who had been wounded in the course of service in Iraq and Afghanistan. In over two dozen visits since then, he often encouraged the uh, injured servicemen and women to continue their education, and he subsequently joined in establishing and assumed responsibility for raising funds to support an educational counseling program for wounded U.S. veterans, severely injured military veterans fulfilling their dreams, that is now bearing, being offered through the American Council on Education. President Wright worked with Senators Jim Webb, John Warner, and Chuck Hagel on language for the GI Bill that was passed by Congress and signed by President Bush in June 2008. 
His interest successfully met was to provide a means for private institutions to partner with Veterans Affairs in supporting veterans who matriculated at these institutions. This is known as the Yellow Ribbon Program, and Norwich probably takes part in that. Um, Dr. Wright's book, among one of the reasons that he's here at the Colby Military Writers Symposium, Those Who Have Borne the Battle, A History of America's Wars and Those Who Fought Them, was released in April 2012. In the book, he provides a historical overview of American views of wars and those who have fought them from the American Revolution to the current wars and shares some of his own experiences and insights. Please welcome Dr. Wright. Dr. David McIntyre, Colonel McIntyre, is a distinguished visiting fellow at the Homeland Security Studies and Analysis Institute in Washington, D.C., and at the bipartisan WMD Terrorism Research Center in Washington, D.C., as well as the Director of Homeland Security and Defense Programs at the National Graduate School. He presently serves on the editorial board of the Journal of Homeland Security Education and writes a regular column for Inside Homeland Security. Dr. McIntyre was appointed to the National Security Education Board by President Bush in 2008. He previously served on the National Board of Directors of the InfraGuard National Members Alliance, a public-private partnership with the FBI, as academic advisor to the University and Colleges Committee of the International Association of Emergency Managers, on the Steering Committee of the Homeland Security Defense Educational Consortium, and on the 2002-2003 Defense Science Board Summer Study on Homeland Security. He's taught Homeland Security at the Elliott School of George Washington University, the LBJ School of the University of Texas, and the Bush School at Texas A&M. He also directed the Integrative Center for Homeland Security at Texas A&M for four years. He has numerous uh, uh, press credentials and interviews with uh, every major network in the United States, numerous radio stations, and including last night, uh, was doing a uh, cell phone radio interview with a s- station in Texas. Prior to this, he served a 30-year career in the United States Army with duties alternating between airborne and reconnaissance units and writing and teaching strategy. He taught in the English department at West Point and retired as the dean of the faculty and academics at the National War College in 2001. He was my dean when I was a student there. Dr. McIntyre's book, Yeah, he did a good job. Thank you, sir. (laughs) Dr. McIntyre's book, um, A a Rollicking Good Read, is uh, Centerline, which depicts the story of uh, a U.S. Air Force medevac C-130 transport and then the lives of its crew, uh, the medical personnel who support the transportation of wounded veterans, bringing them home in time for Christmas. And it's a really good story, and I enjoyed it immensely. He holds a BS in Engineering from the United States Military Academy, West Point, an MA in English and American Literature from Auburn University, and a PhD in Political Science from the University of Maryland, College Park, Maryland. Please welcome Dr. McIntyre. (laughs) Carl Melanthus, or uh, First Lieutenant Melanthus, uh, directly to my left, uh, grew up in Seaside, Oregon, and I think he's back in the uh, great Northwest now. He was a uh, high school football player and a student body president at Seaside High School, class of 1963, where his father was principal. He won a National Merit Scholarship and attended Yale University. He was a member of Jonathan Edwards College and Beta Thai Pi. He played wing forward for Yale's rugby team. He was a Rhodes Scholar at University College in Oxford, and it was from University College in Oxford that he was called to active duty as an infantry officer in the United States Marine Corps. After his military service, he returned to Oxford and earned a master's degree. He made his living as an international business consultant in India, England, Singapore, and France. He's the author of Matterhorn, a novel of the Vietnam War, a New York Times top 10 bestseller published in 2010. Sebastian Junger in the New York Times declared Matterhorn one of the most profound and devastating novels ever to come out of Vietnam. Matterhorn received the 2011 Washington Book State Book Award in the fiction category. It's based on his combat experience as an infantry officer in the Vietnam War and as a Marine Corps second and first lieutenant. His personal decorations include the Navy Cross, 
the Bronze Star, two Navy Commendation Medals for Valor, two Purple Hearts, and ten Air Medals. After his combat tour in Vietnam, he served